Right, I think this is about the fourth time I've tried to record this, and uh, every time there's been some issue with the Raspberry Pi locking up at some point, and uh, after about 30 minutes of recording, uh, I had to actually physically go out and unplug it, uh, because it wasn't happy. The, uh, the change is being made. Anyway, what we're looking at today is the Raspberry Pi version 1.3 camera, uh, connected to uh, Raspberry Pi and Octoprint. So currently we've got it set up there. We've got the default settings. So it is a 640 by 480. If you use the streaming uh, URL, which is there, it will tell you the size of the stream and the picture quality. You can see there as you zoom in goes looks fairly reasonable uh, when it's zoomed out. So, well, I know we've got a 1920 by 1080 version 1.3 camera connected, and we need to go in to the Raspberry Pi and make some changes to a text file. Um, now, you can take the SD card out of the uh, Raspberry Pi, but you're going to have to unplug it and reboot it and everything. Uh, and it's, there's easier ways of doing it without um, plugging the Raspberry Pi or taking SD cards out, etc. And, and for that, you're going to need a program called Putty. It uh, gives you secure shell access. And you're going to need a couple of things. You will firstly need to have had a uh, SSH user and password set up when you originally installed OptoPrints. Uh, if you use the Imager program, I imager, it would have given you that option in the settings, a little gear symbol to set this up. So if you haven't done that, you're not going to get access, so you're going to have to redo all of that um, if you would like a secure shell access. So here we need to know the uh, IP address. And the port is always going to be 22 unless you've changed it, and I doubt very much anyone bothered to change it and then click open and uh, what it's now asking us to do is log in now you would have created the user called pi and then you hit turn now it's saying that the password for pi is whatever you entered and now we are logged in as pi at raspberry pi uh, now, the folder we need to access is called boot, and we are going to change directory to boot. And you'll see that we've gone to boot, and now we want to run a text editing program called Nano, which is built into this. And actually, let's do a, um, you can do a directory, or you can do a list. The, the file we're interested in is this one here called octopi.txt. So we're going to run nano octopi.txt, but there's going to be a problem in a minute, and I'll show you why. So that's opened up the text file, and uh, down at the bottom, near the bottom of the text file, we've got this warning that it is unwritable. Uh, now that is because the user called Pi does not have the high, does not have high enough privileges to edit things and save them. Uh, and the reason for that is you can make a hideous mistake with Linux and you can destroy the whole server just by entering, you know, the wrong command or misspelling something. I've done it myself. Um, on the Raspberry Pi, it really isn't going to be a concern. But if you cock it up on a dedicated server like I run the forum and websites on, you can have a you know major disaster on your hand. Uh, so you have to um, go through some hoops to get to uh, the admin or the root user. Anyway, so we can, whilst we can edit this file, and you can see you cannot move around with your mouse you have to use the up, down, left and right arrows. You can see the cursor moving around there. So you can edit this, but you can't save it. So that's useless. So we'll need to come out of this. And if you look at the bottom, 
the up arrow is the control button, so you hold the control button and then hit X, and that will uh, exit out of that text file. And we are back to our boot uh, directory as the user pi. Now there's a command called uh, super user do sudo, and if you use the minus s, and then hit return, it's going to ask you for your current pi user password. And then hit return. And now, if you look, you are still in the same root, uh, boot directory, but you're now root. So you have full control. You can start doing stupid things like deleting files and things like that. But the, what we want to do is open this octopi.txt. You can also use the up and down arrows to scroll through previous commands. So in our case, we want nano octopi.txt. And then we'll open it again this time. So now we are going to make some changes from the default. We are going to remove the hash key, sorry, the hash symbol, because if you see a hash symbol, that line is commented out and does not have any effect. If you're used to editing Marlin, and you probably are, you'll know that two slashes is editing something out, and the hash, the hash symbol is expected to be at the start of every line. Uh, that's not the case with Linux. So uh, I do not, well, actually I'm going to leave it on auto. We may at some point try another USB camera. I've already tried the Creality one that I've got and I know that does not work. So uh, we'll set it on auto. It will try the USB webcam, see if there is one. If that doesn't work, it will go to the Raspberry Pi 1.3 that we've got connected. Uh, we are then going to set some Oh, so sorry, change the defaults of 640 by 480. If we go back to this screen, you can see there it's 640 by 480. And, uh, you can see it there as well. So camera USB options, we are going to leave it as it is, uh, but it is now active. And then we are going to go down to the particular Raspberry Pi camera line, which is there. We're going to remove that. And you're going to enter minus x 1920 minus y 1080 frames per second 15. Uh, you'll be entering whatever your camera has. I've got the version 1.3, so I know that is the correct resolution. And pretty much for most users, you're not going to need to touch anything else there. Right, so we're going to need to save this. So we are going to go to Control and O. Control O, not zero. Control O, uh, file name to write is octopi.txt and hit the return key. So that's saved. We are then going to hit Control and X, exit, and we're back to where we were. And we're just going to pause that. Right, back again, and I've completely lost what we were doing. Ah, yes, so uh, we are back uh, in the boot uh, directory as root, and we've just made the changes to the octopi.txt. Uh, now we need to reboot part of this so it knows uh, that the changes have got to be implemented. And what you do here is start the web restart the webcam daemon. So it's a service, webcam D, restart. And after a few seconds, that will come back to the root again. And that has restarted, hopefully, this webcam D. And to prove that, you would need to go back to your image, either on the stream. You can see it's stopped. If we refresh that again, you can see that it has now changed to 1920 by 1080 and if we go back to octoprint and refresh that same thing you'll hopefully see an improved picture and uh, a few seconds unfortunately the recording software is slowing things down so yeah and you should see a better picture uh, now uh, here so now there are a whole list of things that you can change if you uh, look at this sheet here. 
uh, Raspberry Pi camera options. You've got frames per second. You can the width, height, quality, JPEGs. Uh, use stills mode instead of video. Sharpness, contrast, saturation. A whole load of things that you can change. They may not all work on all versions of the Raspberry Pi camera, um, but uh, yeah. So just bear those in mind, and uh, yeah, that is the original text file that's all commented out. That is how it's going to look for you by default, and uh, at that point you can. You type in exit now, that will take you back to your user pi. So we're going to be from root to pi. Here we are at pi. If you want to exit completely, you do exit again, hit return, and it will close you down and you are out of it. So Yeah, 1920 by 1080. And I'm still trying to log into the print. This recording software really seems to slow things down, unfortunately. There we go. Yeah, Mom, you can do it. <sighs> Eventually, come on, you can do it. We know this is working, the stream's good and it's active. You can see the little thing moving there, it's just Octopin that's playing. <laughs> I'll start again. Yeah, there we go. Just got its knickers in a twist for whatever reason. It happens when you're rebooting servers and things. We'll go back to the stream, and there we are 1920 by 1080. Uh, so, yeah, uh, hopefully. Uh, that was of some use and uh, the settings and things here will really vary depending on the camera you've got and your usage and things like that, uh, and especially with the USB side of things. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was useful and I'll catch you later.